In the bank. Yep. It happened. This happened. We're not living in a, a real world anymore. We're just not. Nothing can be, you can't expect anything anymore. Nothing good. We got this virus. We have a murder hornets. And now we have Otis. Otis. Otis as Mr. Money in the Bank. That's the world we live in right now. That's 2020. That's 2020. Yep. My God. My God. This card overall was good. Match quality wise, the matches were good. The main event, or main events, uh, both of the Money in the Bank matches, had, was like, I was entertained, but it was cringeworthy entertainment. There was cringe all over it. All over it. Look, I'm, I'm very glad I watched this with headphones on, on my laptop, by myself, instead of on my TV with my girlfriend in the room. Because she would have asked, what the hell are you watching? During that money in the bank thing? Nah. Nah. It's a bad look. It's a bad look. It... it no. So many things wrong with that. So many things wrong. But let's get into the card. Let's get to the matches first. First match of the night. The New Day. Fatal 4-Way Tag Team Titles on the line. SmackDown Tag Titles. And I'm actually at the point where I think they should just merge the tag titles together. They don't treat the tag titles very well. The, uh, the teams aren't very good. We, it feels like a jobber division. Just make one title belt now. Like just let's just merge them, have one tag team champions, and let them cross brands. But discussion for a different day. The New Day versus uh, the Forgotten Sons versus Miz and Morrison versus the Lucha House Party. I thought maybe, maybe the Forgotten Sons had a chance. Like some maybe WWE's trying to would make them like a stars like immediately make them seem legit. Immediately. Nah. New Day wins. New Day retains. In what was a fast-paced good match. Morrison had a nice uh, Spanish fly spot off the turnbuckle. But instead of backflipping into the ring. Him. He goes. I think him and Grand Matalik. I think it was. Do, they, they go outside the ring onto a pile of men. That was great. Great spot. Good match. Just predictable outcome. Which is basically this entire card. Until the end. We're getting there. We had Bobby Lashley beat R-Truth for what? For what? Look, R-Truth's a Hall of Famer. He's going to be a Hall of Famer. I'm okay with it. He's putting a lot of years of work here in the WWE. Deserves to go in the Hall of Fame. But damn, man, it might be time. It might be time to hang it up. The jokes are old. The the R-Truth is stupid jokes. They're kind of just wearing thin. They're just not... There's nothing to them anymore. He was supposed to fight MVP for whatever reason, and then Bobby Lashley came out, replaced MVP, and beat R-Truth in about a minute 30, a minute 40. Who cares? Who needed this? Whatever. Who cares? Just I guess just to give Lashley something to do. Nothing. Now, if they want to go down a path of MVP being Lashley's full-time manager and that becomes a strong, decent storyline, I'll say this was a good start. But if, if not... And this was just to give Lashley a squash victory over our truth Then who the hell cares? We didn't need it. We know Lashley was going to beat him. We know Lashley's better. Unnecessary. Waste of time. We had Bailey versus Tamina for the SmackDown Women's title. <sighs> Tamina. 
Can anyone tell me how she's still employed? How? Everyone always says Vince got an affinity for attractive blondes. To me, it's neither of those things. Why the hell is she still employed? It's been a long time. Oh, because she's a snooker? They're trying, they've tried to erase Jimmy Snooker from all of WWE history because he killed a guy or a girl, whatever. He killed somebody 30 something years ago. We don't need any Snooka anymore. She's never been good at wrestling. She's never had the look. She can't speak. This isn't cut it. This just isn't for her. That's it. That's it. The best thing she ever did, did was be AJ Lee's bodyguard. That was great. But let's be serious. 75% of that credit goes to AJ Lee. That's it. Bailey wins. Anyone surprised? Nope. Of course she wins. She better. To me, it stinks. I will say, though, Bailey, the more she's been, the longer she's been champion, the more I'm liking the title run. Weird. Weird. I've been wanting to get that belt off her for a couple months now, but now it's kind of like looking at the other options. Bailey's doing okay? Is that is that okay to say? I think she's doing all right now. Hmm. Weird. Weird. Then we had Braun Strowman versus Bray Wyatt. Not The Fiend. Mr. Rogers Bray Wyatt. And this match was also good, but that's if you take their characters and their gimmicks away. Then you just look at the match itself. It was a good match. But knowing the, the gimmicks and the characters, this match shouldn't have been this close. This was really close. Like, Bray hit him with like two finishes at the end that got near falls. They shouldn't have. They just shouldn't have. This just, They're saving Fiend versus Braun for either Backlash or SummerSlam. But now, that match was so close, Fiend better beat the hell out of Braun. Because Mr. Rogers almost beat Braun. It's like Bray and Braun. Braun's a little better, but it's close. It should have been not close, and Bray had to go get the Fiend to back him up and him to put on a, a, a an ass whooping, a fight with Braun. Stan's like, uh, if we didn't know about the Fiend, Mr. Rogers Bray may deserve a rematch. It was close. Yeah, I didn't, I understand it. I don't like it. I don't think it's smart booking. I don't think it's good booking. I don't think it's bad storytelling overall. Because The Fiend, I, I thought, was supposed to be way better than Bray. Like, a lot better than Bray Wyatt. And instead, it looks like they're kind of close. You know what I mean? They're, they're kind of close. And it, it just shouldn't, it just shouldn't be like that. It just shouldn't be like it, but... Whatever, Braun Strowman won, Power Slam, of course. Not, not shocking. Drew McIntyre versus Seth Rollins for the WWE title. Call me a broken record, another good match. Another good match. But again, I just, I don't know. Without a crowd... Drew McIntyre's momentum is kind of stunted. It, it is, just a little. He's doing his best, but I, watching it, I really was hoping the whole time, or just thinking about the whole time, he's going to be great as a main event heel. Like, if he can somehow hold on to that title until he turns heel, he's going to be great at it. He's going to be great at it. But as a face, you know, his jokes and stuff, he's not bad, it's okay, but without a crowd, it does feel... Kind of weird. It feels kind of lameish. But, again, great match. And there was a moment at the end, Seth Rollins hit a curb stomp, where it truly felt, by the momentum of the match, that Seth was about to win. And I was like, no way. And he drew kicked out. But it looked like Seth was about to win the title. Just saying. Now, the most intriguing thing, maybe of the night, to me, fuck Otis, but maybe of the night was... After the match, Drew McIntyre celebrated, lifted his title proud. It's normal babyface champion things. He walked up the ramp 
and then came back and offered to shake Seth Rollins' hand. And Seth was thinking about it, and Drew then told him, show everyone you're a leader. And he, he did. He shook his hand. It was very strange, because... Are, are they turn, they are they turning Seth back face? Is this the beginning of a face turn for Seth? Which I hope not. I actually really like this uh, Monday Night Messiah gimmick he's go, he's doing right now. It's it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It deserves to hold a world title. And I don't think you can do this gimmick. Oh, you just can't. You can't do this gimmick as a face. It just doesn't work. So are they scrapping it? It was very strange. But if he stays a heel, this handshake does add a little layer to his character. It's like, hmm. Maybe he isn't an asshole. Maybe, you know, maybe he actually might be kind of a good guy, a leadership guy who's just gone too far. I don't know. I really liked it. I think it's very intriguing. Just small details like that. That's what we need, WWE. Just can we do it more than just one with one story at a time? Can we, can we do interesting things like three times a pay-per-view? Something like that. Something. We had the women and men's Money in the Bank ladder matches. Yeah. Again. I can't say I wasn't entertained through most of it. I was. I wanted to see what was going to happen. Cameos all over the place, so I was sticking around to see see if my boy Big Show would show up or Undertaker, just see what would happen. Stone Cold, something, you know, just just watching. But the wrestling, there was none. There was none. I, I was hoping it would look kind of like uh, WrestleMania X7. WrestleMania 17, the hardcore title match. Raven, Big Show, Kane, and they're fighting backstage for 15, 20 minutes. But there were spots. This was like that, but with no spots. None. None. In the hardcore match in X7, Kane threw Raven through a glass window with a chain wrapped around his neck. Sweet. Big Show and Kane brawled through a couple walls. Sweet. And it ended with a nice, just tackle, Raven, Kane, Big Show pile going through some wood shit laid outside the staging area. Also very sweet. Nothing. Nothing. They said they were going to just fight up the, the WWE building and you know, carnage and destruction. Nah, nothing got broken. Nothing really got broken. I think one mirror. I think Corbin broke a fucking mirror in the weight room. Who cares? We saw it happen on the uh, the NXT Gargano versus Ciampa match uh, a couple weeks ago. So what? Nothing else. Nothing. They are putting out hype that someone was going to fall from the top of the building. And we know, obviously, they weren't actually going to fall. It's going to be a gimmick thing, but no, that didn't even happen. Nope. Now, what they did try to do is this, are we supposed to believe that the two people Corbin threw over, like, off the roof, actually were supposed to be off the roof? Because if so, we're supposed to presume that Rey Mysterio and Aleister Black are dead. Or is it just supposed to show that they, like, he threw them not off the roof, but, like, over some shit? And just landed on like a, a another little platform down there because they didn't return to the match and they didn't say or show anything to do with them. I I, I don't know. I, I, you could just save that if that was your off the building spots. Keep them. Who cares? It looked it. It was stupid. It was stupid. You couldn't actually see any fall. You didn't. It didn't show them on the ground or on whatever they landed on. It showed nothing. 
He just got dumped over like it was the Royal Rumble, and we heard a clearly fake thump sound. That's it. He got thrown off a roof like they're piles of trash. <sighs> they could have just saved it. You didn't need the spots then. If that was your big spot, keep them. Because you couldn't even tell what was really happening. Who cares? And we know they didn't actually die, so stop. And Asuka, she just won. The women got kind of like screwed here. Like they didn't have any real spots. They had a spot at the very beginning. Oscar jumped off a little thing onto a pile of women when, as soon as the match started. Beyond that, no, no, not a lot happened for them. But again, not a lot happened for the men. Cameos. We all had cameos. Vince showed up. Stephanie showed up. And Stephanie in a very pointless cameo. Like it, it meant nothing. It made Dana Brooke like a complete fucking idiot. Dana Brooke climbed a table in an office and grabbed a hanging briefcase thinking she won and they played her music all this all this extravagant trash and then Stephanie walks in and breaks the news to her that that's not the real briefcase it's on the roof you moron D Dana did, like if that was Baron Corbin it would make more sense because we're supposed to think he's a fucking idiot and laugh at him Dana is supposed to be like a baby face. Cinderella story. You, you made her look really stupid. You did. You did. Because for weeks, we've known. We're, you're fighting to the corporate building. And on top, there will be a ring. And above that ring are the briefcases. You just thought, in some random office building, that that briefcase mattered? That's, that, that makes no sense. They said it right before the match. It's on, it's on the roof. They've said it for weeks. It's on the roof. Uh, whatever. Danny Brooke looks an idiot. Looks like an idiot, but I don't care about Danny Brooke that much, so who cares? Who cares? Do we have Vince McMahon? Little cameo with AJ Styles, Danny Bryan. That was funny. That was pretty good. I'm okay with that one. Besides that, the, the Buddy Love and Rey Mysterio in a weird, creepy bathroom. What was that? Buddy Love comes out, flushes a toilet, comes out of a bathroom. Ray has this weird smile on. And Buddy says, I love you. And he says, I love you too. What the fuck was that? What? I don't know. Didn't need it. Didn't need it at all. <laughs> Didn't need it at all. Uh, then we had a John, John Laronitis. John Laronitis, Mr. People Power. He made a little, he rolled in and had his little little moment with Otis. Otis threw a pie in his face. Yeah. These were the spots. These were the moments of this Money in the Bank. Were random cameos that did nothing. None of them were really that good, interesting, entertaining, or funny. They were just there. All right. Another cameo was Paul Heyman eating a goddamn sandwich. And... A food fight breaks out. Match stops to have a food fight. So does nobody care about the briefcase? Does nobody want it? Let's just have a food fight. Yeah, that food fight summed up basically this entire Money in the Bank match. Again, show was entertaining because we had some good matches on the on the card. But the main events, man, I'm glad I watched it alone with headphones on and my girl didn't see what I was watching because sometimes it's hard to be a, a wrestling fan because, good Lord, it was a lot, one part entertainment, two parts cringeworthy. It was rough and zero parts wrestling. No wrestling took place in the main event. None. I was expecting some. You know, give me something. A couple DDTs. Give me a couple choke slams. Something in the office rooms. Like you can't throw someone down some stairs. Something. Do something. They did nothing. They did nothing. They could have done. You're having a group of people, men and women, fight at the same time up 
from the ground level to the ceiling, to the roof, actually. And you, you did nothing with that? No elevator, like cool or funny elevator spots where someone hits all the buttons and Garmin's stuck inside like an idiot? None of that? No. None of it. We had a food fight and cameos. Very disappointing. Very disappointing. Oh. Oh, and by the way, Otis won, if I didn't mention that earlier. To make matters worse, I know you win, but the way it happened pissed me the hell off. What are the rules? With winning the money in the bank. What are the rules? I thought you had to take it off. If you if you take it off and you're the holder. I can see if you, two people took it off at the same time. They're both holding it. But AJ Styles took it off. And he dropped it. And Otis caught it. So Otis wins? But he AJ had it for a, a second or two. The, the bell should have already rang. It should have been over. Otis. Yep. Otis is our money in the bank winner. And he's not gonna he's not gonna actually cash in and win. So for what was the point? Couldn't tell you. What was the point? It feels like these cat these money in the banks are becoming less and less valuable by the year. So many people keep failing. We had several years where if you won the Money in the Bank briefcase match, you were going to become champion, 100%. Then it dropped to 95, then 90, when it, with a couple failures. It's down to 83%, and it looks like it's going to drop more with Otis. The only way it doesn't is if Mandy screws him out of it, or AJ Styles... Puts him in a match. They fights AJ Styles for it, and he loses it. Something like that. But if he just goes to cash in, he has no chance. Let's be serious. Otis is not a world champion. That's not going to happen. Or at least it better not. But Otis winning just summed up how serious Vince took the money, this Money in the Bank ladder match main event. He didn't. He didn't take it seriously at all. Buddy Love, Laronitis, Paul Heyman food fights, himself, Stephanie. That's it. No spots. Zero. Zero. Nothing. I would have just preferred to start the match on the roof. with a, And just have a normal Money in the Bank ladder match between the guys. And then the women can come later in the show or earlier in the show, whatever. Just do a normal ladder match. I would have preferred that. Like when they announced this, I thought this could be interesting. And they went the complete opposite way. It was just goofy. That's it. No wrestling. This was not like the Boneyard match. I thought it was going to be like the Boneyard match, but from like the bottom of a building to the top. And then we get a little actual wrestling in the ring ladder match style. No, none of that. Just a bunch of punches and kicks and loud groaning from men. And that's it. Let me know what you guys thought. I'm disappointed. That's all. Besides that, the show was pretty good. If you take the main events away, I'd say the show's probably a B plus. Match qualities. The other the other wrestlers really put in time and work. Those matches were good. Yeah, the main events were they brought it down. I'd say this show is by a C minus. C minus, maybe a C. It's about it. We have backlash coming up next, which at least it's not another Saudi Arabian show. So I'm I'm happy for that because those are just glorified house shows. Hit the like, tell people, share the video, do something. Let's let's grow the channel. I'd appreciate you. Hopefully Raw. I'm trying to get my hopes up. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Hopefully Raw is pretty good with Edge and Orton. I don't know. Let me know again. What, what, what do you guys think of this show? And if you are still here, you are a real one.